You know, Peter, it's so nice that after all these years we've been together, we can still... Smoke break! What? Peter, what are you doing down there? Nothing. Well, it doesn't seem like nothing. <laughs> Peter, since when are you a smoker? Put that out right now. Smoking is highly addictive. I'm not addicted. I just need a couple every hour or so, so I don't go completely insane. Peter, that's exactly what addicted means. You have a serious problem. Cigarettes will kill you. Relax, Lois. I can quit any time I want. Look, I'll toss this one out right now. I'm so sorry I threw you out the window. Oh. Hey, man, can you keep it down? Sorry. Wait, whose bedroom are you in? Meg's. Okay, that's fine then. <gasps> Peter, your fart didn't go off until 8.30. Get up, we're late. <laughs> oh, what the hell? What, what, what? Peter, it, it, it's horrible. Other people live here. Oh, my God. How did this happen? It's from smoking. Not that bad. Peter, you can't live like this. I'm taking you to Dr. Hartman. No, I hate the doctor. Are you sure? There are Cheez-Its in there. Cheez-Its? Huh? Wait, wait, what's going on? I'm scared! I'm scared! Ah, oh, it's night time. Good night. Griffin, I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. Do you think I can jump and touch that pipe up there? I don't know. The hell I can't! There, got it. Yeah, I guess your fingertips grazed it. Yeah, that counts as a dunk. Dr. Hartman, we're here for you to help Peter quit smoking. This is Griffin, I can't do that. It's an addiction. I can't even get my son to quit being gay. Well, you gotta do something. He's killing himself. Ugh, all right, how many Vicodins for you guys to just leave me alone? Forty. Well, it's too bad Dr. Hartman couldn't help us. I guess we should go to the Stop Smoking Clinic and then maybe get a couple bottles of wine. Thank you for meeting me here. I have something very important to tell you. I have something important to tell you, too. Peter, I think we should see other people. Okay. Uh, good. That's what I was going to say, too. Oh, hey, Stewie. Ready to go to school? Well, actually, Chris, I got good news. Oh, I'll take the bad news first. No, what? There is no bad news. Oh, all right, then give me the good news first. Uh, the good news is I've taught you everything you need to know to fend for yourself. So from now on, you can go to school without me. What are you talking about? I'm running for class president. I need you. What are you doing? You're coming to school with me whether you like it or not. Let me out! You can't keep me in here forever! I have too many plans for the future! I'll never win a Nobel Prize! I'll never be a member of Parliament! I'll never get to express disappointment with young people while putting in my dentures! Hi, Peter Griffin, sickly smoker. This is your heart. This is your heart on cigarettes. Any questions? Yeah, where'd you get that heart? Hey, Peter, now that you're a celebrity, could I get a picture of you to put on the wall? Sure, here you go. Thanks, man. I'll put you up next to these black celebrities who are just confusing strangers to you. It was Marlon Johnson. Oh, come on, man. Stand-up comedian? He got that whole thing about the oh we oh we hey oh <laughs> I can't even get through it. Hey, you talking about Marlon Johnson? You know it. Oh we oh we hey oh. <laughs> That's right. Peter, I'm ready. Okay, now put on yours. Wow, isn't it weird that we both picked Mario Lopez? Yes, Peter. It's very weird. Yeah, it shows that we both go Latino, but soft Latino. Day five of my imprisonment inside Chris's backpack. Feces and the build-up thereof continues to be my number one problem. I think a teacher saw me the other day but said nothing. I waved and he looked away. <laughs> this could be my chance to escape this canvas cage! <laughs> that sounds like an open door. Which way is out? God, I love walking in the hall. There, that way! <laughs> Must escape! Must escape. You're gonna die in there. Oh, hello. You must be Cocoon. We don't have any rocks to make you stronger here, but welcome. <laughs> you must be Peter. I'm Evelyn, a friend of your mother's. Oh, oh, hi. This is my family. They're of no comfort. Oh, I know it's tough what you're going through. You're where I was 17 years ago when I lost my husband, Walter. He died of pancreatic cancer. That sounds sad, but I didn't know him. And I miss my mom so much. Well, I knew your mother better than anyone. I could tell you stories. Well, that sounds nice. Peter, the two of you should hang out together. I'd like that very much. Well, it's four o'clock. I'm off to bed. Wow, Peter, looks like you made a new friend. Yeah, and maybe she can be my new mom. You know, just like Greg Evigan and Paul Reiser were briefly my two dads. How about now? Is this doing anything for you? No. Hmm. Well, what if I show you my tattoo? Nothing. Well, you got a dead rat in your pants, mister. There's gotta be something you can do, Dr. Hartman. Have you tried getting a divorce? I've never seen this problem in a single man. Doctor, what about Viagra or Cialis? What about them? Well, if Peter could try them, they might help with his problem. Those are for man troubles? I've been prescribing them as antidepressants. All right, Meg, stay incredibly still. I'm gonna whip that cigarette out of your mouth. And maybe not slice your face in half. Dad, I don't want to do this. Stay still! <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool, too. Hey, Dad, that's a cool whip. <laughs> I thought you couldn't understand me!